Hello everyone, this is John Pauli from Gothenburg, Sweden, and this is my new podcast on Bowen's disease, Revisited. So looking back historically, the first report on dermoscopy of Bowen's disease was actually published in 2004, 15 years ago, by Iris Salaurek et al. And they looked at 21 non-facial Bowen's disease lesions that had not been diagnosed correctly clinically, and 81% of these were located on the lower extremities. What they found in these 21 lesions is that the most common findings were glomerular vessels, as you can see in the image to the right, and scales, in, which were present in 90% of the cases. Another common finding was ulceration in 29% of the cases. When looking specifically at the pigmented Bowen's disease lesions, which were 10 of these lesions, 9 of these lesions had brown globules, 8 of the lesions had structureless pigmentation, and 10%, so 1 out of the 10 lesions, also presented with pigment streaks. Another historically important publication in regards to dermoscopy of Bowen's disease was this one from the teams in Brisbane and Vienna, and they collected 52 pigmented cases, consecutive ones, and this turned out to be about 5 to 6% of all biopsy lesions. They also found that glomerular or coiled vessels, as they, as they called them, were present in approximately two-thirds of the cases, but they also found a couple of new findings in pigmented Bowen's disease, and this was brown or gray dots arranged in lines in 21% of the lesions, and dotted or coiled vessels also arranged in lines in approximately 11.5% of the cases. More recently, in 2018, Emilios Lala's team in Greece published this article comparing the accuracy of dermoscopic criteria for the differentiation between superficial basal cell carcinoma and Bowen's disease. They included 89 Bowen's disease lesions and uh, 194 superficial BCCs. And uh, as you can see, a great uh, number of these were pigmented, 32% of the Bowen's disease lesions and 60% of the superficial BCCs had pigmentation. When looking specifically at the cases of Bowen's disease, they found that the most important diagnostic criteria dermoscopically were the glomerular or dotted vessels, but also white and yellow scales, uh, particularly this combination of not just white scales, but also yellow scales, brown dots and lines in the pigmented cases, and sometimes also erosions, but these were less specific since they are also visible in many cases of superficial BCC. When looking more specifically at the superficial BCC cases, what they found in these lesions was uh, mainly superficial fine telangiectasias, which were quite specific for BCC, erosions and white scales, which were common in both types of lesions, as mentioned previously, uh, leaf-like and concentric areas in the pigmented cases of BCC, and also in the background, in the reddish-pinkish background, they also found white shiny blotches and strands to be quite common. So after this short review of the literature, uh, I wanted to mention some of the most common dermoscopic findings in non-pigmented Bowen's disease. And in summary, uh, what we'll find here in general will be dotted and, and or glomerular vessels, keratin, which can be white and or yellow. Specifically, we can find sometimes blood spots on the keratin. And we can also find a special distribution of multiple small keratin islands, which some people have described as cotton candy keratosis. And in different areas, and sometimes in the background, we can find also pinkish white structureless areas. So here we have a case of non-pigmented Bowen's disease in which we can find glomerular vessels within these blue outlined areas. But we also find an area within the black box that has hyperkeratosis, so white and yellow keratin in this case, and we can also see at the bottom small little blood spots on the keratin. Here's another case of Bowen's disease in which we find glomerular vessels as well. In the blue outlined areas, we see hyperkeratosis or scales, which are white in this case, and in the black outlined area at the bottom, we can see this type of pinkish white structureless areas. Here's one more case from the scalp, and here we can again see the typical glomerular vessels, typically organized or distributed in clusters. We can see the whitish-yellow scales. We can also see in this case, interestingly, a partial keratin rim, such as the ones that we can find in porokeratosis, for example. And again, we see this pinkish-white structureless areas in parts of the lesion. Last but not least, we have, in some cases of Bowen's disease, this 
particular distribution of the scales in small multiple keratin islands. And this was described for the first time by Gutierrez Mendoza et al. in 2010. Uh, and they described this type of these type of islands as cotton candy keratosis. Here we have two more examples of so-called cotton candy keratosis or small multiple keratin islands distributed irregularly in the lesion. So now moving on to pigmented bone disease. In addition to all the dermoscopic findings found in, in non-pigmented cases, we can also find both structuralist pigmentation and, as mentioned previously, brown, gray, or even red peripheral dots arranged in lines. So here we have a histopathologically verified case of pigmented Bowen's disease. And as you can see, we have some areas of structuralist pigmentation, but we also have an area at the periphery with brown dots arranged in lines. Here is another case of pigmented Bowen's disease, and you can see the typical scales, white and yellow. You can see erosions. You can see structuralist pinkish-white areas. But you can also find at the periphery pigmentation. And if we look at the pigmentation, it's more like brown streaks, as described previously by other authors. This was a difficult case in the facial area, also confirmed as a pigmented Bowen's disease. But if we look at the periphery, we will find an area here in which we can see these typical brown dots arranged in lines. And this has to make us suspect Bowen's disease, or at least included in our differential diagnosis. So finally, I wanted to mention some non-specific dermoscopic findings which we might encounter in Bowen's disease and which also might make us think of the wrong diagnosis. So in this case, for example, we see erosions and ulceration which might make us suspect superficial BCC, but we can also see a lot of scaling. And when looking closer at the white and yellow scales, we can also find blood spots in the keratin. We can also find in these blue areas clusters of glomerular vessels, so Bowen's disease. Here's a case mimicking BCC as well with shiny white strands and clods in the blue outlined area, but we also see glomerular vessels in the upper left-hand quadrant. This is a very difficult case in the facial area on the nose, in which we see short fine telangiectasias in the upper left quadrant, but we also see rosettes and diffuse uh, structuralist pigmentation and this was verified as Bowen's disease as well. In these two cases, we see a completely different image, slight pigmentation to the right and more non-pigmented to the left, and a lot of scales. And at the periphery, you can see that there's uh, something that resembles a keratin rim or coronoid lamella, as we would expect in the poor keratosis. But these were both cases verified as Bowen's disease as well. And last but not least, hairpin vessels, which are kind of diffuse and not perfectly visible in this case, but it was also verified as a Bowen's disease. We see the keratin in the middle and blood spots again on the keratin. And one more case with hairpin vessels at the periphery mimicking a squamous cell carcinoma, but also verified as Bowen's disease. So in summary, we can have lots of different variations of Bowen's disease, uh, but in most cases we will find typical findings that can help us make the diagnosis. So with this, I'm going to end the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye.